Welcome back to Overland Florida everybody. I'm Kevin and today I want to go over the power system on my off-grid camper. As you browse other people's setups online, it can be overwhelming at times. Um, everyone's systems are different. Some can be overkill. They have way too many pieces. So if you're looking for a list to put together of the bare minimum things you'll need to have off-grid power on, let's say, your um, small camper, your vehicle, a van, even an off-grid cabin, I'm gonna show you guys my setup. It's really simple. It's made up of just four main components and you could get cheap ones off Amazon, eBay. Um, some are Renogy, some are um, Booge RV and uh, I'll show you guys the battery that I have as well. But four main components. So starting with the solar panels up on the roof. I'll show you, there. I'll show you those in a second. Solar panels, those come down to this toolbox and I have a charge controller. So that's two things. From that charge controller, that goes directly to my battery. That's three. And from the battery, it goes to an inverter. And that'll change it into 110 volt, 120. Um, so you can leave it from 12 volt from the battery, but you'll need a power inverter if you wanna run something like this uh, window unit air conditioner right here. So that's the four things you need to make it as simple as possible. So up on the roof of my camper, I have 400 watts of solar. I have two 200 watt panels. And I also have a portable 200 watt panel as well. So if I'm somewhere in the sun, parked, and we're using air conditioning, I need to charge the batteries. If I'm gonna be there a while, I'll go ahead and put out the third solar panel, which is another 200 watts. So I'll have a total of 600 watts going down this wire into my toolbox. That goes to the charge controller next. So now we're gonna look in the toolbox and it's gonna be a mess, mainly because we actually use our camper. It just doesn't sit in a garage to look pretty. Um, we take this sink all over the country. From the solar panels above, it goes down this little conduit comes in through the bottom of the toolbox to component number two, which is the charge controller. This is Booge RV. It is a 60 amp charge controller. Never had any issues with it. It's been in this camper, in this hot toolbox. Never had an issue, never let us down. A lot of these components will be in the description of the video and like our online store if you guys want to buy the same things that we have. From the charge controller, there is an LCD screen there. Tell you all the information you really need. From the charge controller, it goes to this battery, which is rather large. It's 300 amp hours. So Jillian and I recently got back from a trip from Florida to Northern Maine and back. And it was in the middle of July and the East Coast was having uh, basically a big heat wave. I think in Connecticut, the heat index was like 110 degrees and we camped in our camper the whole time, all the way up and down the East Coast. And for us, it wasn't that hard to adapt, especially living in Florida, we're kind of used to the heat but we had a baby with us that was only a few months old. And for that reason, we are really thankful for this setup because this air conditioner will run for over 12 hours off this 300 amp hour battery. But not only is it running the air conditioner, we have a refrigerator in there. We're charging our tablets. We're charging our, our phones, our cameras, everything electronic that we bring on a trip like that is being run off this solar system and this battery itself. And we're not using shore power. We're out here next to a cow pasture. There's no power. I'm running everything solely off the solar panels on the roof and this battery right here. Now, the fourth component to this is if you wanna run air conditioning, if you wanna run something that's 110, uh, 120 volt, whatever, you will need a um, power inverter. Now, this one I do not recommend. I was kind of in a bind. I waited too late. There was a hurricane coming. Everyone went out to Napa and all the stores and bought all the power inverters. Um, this was the only one that was left at Napa. It was 1500 uh, watts. It's pretty small. It will run the air conditioner, as you can tell, but I wouldn't recommend anything less than 2000 watts for a power inverter. They're rather cheap on Amazon now. So you can kind of just pick whatever one you want. Um, just, I would stick with 2000 or larger watts because you never know what you're gonna want to run. Uh, maybe you're with somebody else their power systems out so you got to run not just yours but theirs as well so it'd be nice to have um, a higher wattage uh, power inverter so that's the four main things you're going to need to run a system like this um, the most expensive obviously is going to be the battery the larger the battery um, the larger amp hours um, it's just they're pretty expensive i want to say this battery is probably like 700 dollars for 300 amp hours but um if you're planning to be off grid a lot and you want to run the air conditioner all night um, typically what we do is we're out during the day, um, maybe we're near water, we can cool off. We'll let the camper charge all day for driving. 
and then at nighttime around eight o'clock i'll turn the air conditioner on as cold as it'll go so it'll be from eight o'clock at night till eight o'clock nine o'clock in the morning and then by that time the sun's coming up so you're already charging the um the battery again so anyway it is getting really hot here in central florida so i just want to make a video showing how simple it is to have an off-grid setup whether like i said it's in your van your car an off-grid cabin um, a shed you don't have to get all crazy with all these different electrical components um, it is a rabbit hole you can go down and you can spend a lot of money um, doing this but if you just want a simple system that works that you can rely on and it's really simple to check if you're having an issue most of the time it's just loose wires or something like that on a system this simple especially when you're, if you're if it's on a trailer and you're getting bounced around off-road it's easy for the wires and stuff to come undone but this is really dependent like I said on the size battery that you have so I wouldn't have less than 300 amp hours you can have three 100 amp hour batteries and wire them together um, if you already have um, batteries like that it doesn't have to be one big battery you can have a series of different batteries but um, like I said I just want to make it a nice simple video um, hopefully it doesn't confuse anybody but there should be a link in the description to like our online store of where I bought some of these products if you guys want to click on those links it'll help us out um, until the next camping video guys thanks for watching